have a stack of star-studded treasures to share with you. Star log cabin quilts. Oh, the star log cabin certainly seems endless in its versatility. Now, Barbara Spencer made this a king size quilt with 36 blocks in it. Oh, it's wonderful with those white stars shining throughout the quilt. And then she took this light blue and framed all of her blocks. Oh, it's great. Well, Barbara is certainly creative because she made a larger quilt in these fabrics. And when she was done, she gave it away and she missed it. So she took all of her scraps and made this miniature quilt. Oh, it's great with all of this machine quilting, the white stars throughout it. You're not gonna believe. She used those last strip of scraps for her backing, pieced it all together. Oh, it's great. Well, I was more contemporary in my selection of fabrics. I love this large scale print that I put into it. Now this is a queen size quilt, 24 blocks, four by six, turquoise stars, turquoise center, it's bright. And then the frame is this light pink that goes around all of the blocks. Ooh, I just love it. Well, you know what you do with scraps. I took those scraps and what I had left I made this four block wall hanging, quite easy to do. This time I put just one border around it, this light turquoise stars, just bright and great. Well, I thought, you know how quilters are so obsessive. I had some more scraps left, but I decided to change the color of the star just to see if it was brighter. So I used those white stars throughout it, turquoise center, and this time a turquoise frame and this dark first border points going out into it. Oh, didn't even finish it yet. But I want to finish my blue quilt first. So join me. I don't need to wait until this evening to see shining stars. I'm going to see stars shining in just a twinkling. Now this is my star fabric and I want to cut the centers of my stars and they are the same measurement as my lattice. So I want to just take my 6 by 6 perfect ruler, measure the lattice from one side to the other. This reads 3 and 3 eighths here. Oh, move it along and if you're lucky, it's going to be another 3 and 3 eighths. Measure several until you get the average measurement. And then take your fabric, I have it all torn, that bruised edge is lined up. Go ahead and use your six by 24 inch ruler. Just trim off that torn, bruised edge, get rid of that, and then cut this, a strip for your star centers. Let's see, oh, I better cut it straight. Three and three eighths. You might need to have several strips for your size quilt. Once you cut a strip, the easiest way is just to go ahead and turn it, take your six by six ruler again, and trim off that salvage edge, oh, get that cut off there, and just line this up using the square up position and cut it into three and three eighths inch squares. Oh, I'll just do one more, and that, that should be pretty good. All right, well, we'll just set these aside until we get our star points done. Now they come from two inch squares. Oh, all these measurements, but we'll get them. The easiest way is just to take this, line it up at zero, and cut the remaining part of your star fabric into an 11 inch strip. 11 inch strip, that's just a little extra. And then take that 11 inch strip and cut it on the fold so that it's more manageable. Now it's an 11 by 22 inch piece. Now from the wrong side, just take one half of it, flip it over, because on this side, we're going to draw a two inch grid. Take your uh, six by 24 again. I like to line it up on the grid. It's a little oversized because an even number would be um, 10 inches. I have 11, so I have a little extra, about a half inch I could trim off right there. And then just go using the grid. Make sure that you have compared the grid and the ruler, making sure that they're exactly the same measurement. Just go across, leaving that fabric laying completely flat and mark first 
two inches across, keep on going, and then two inches the opposite way. I think I'll just go ahead and cut this off here so you can see me go the opposite way. Pull this in just a little, and this way will allow an extra half inch and go two inches the opposite way. Now the best, the best way to do this is keeping this piece of fabric laying square on the table. Otherwise, whoop, oops, I went and slipped it a little bit. Otherwise, you can really get into trouble if you use your ruler as your measurement and keep flipping it. Now, once you've gone the whole way down, I realized that I didn't get to do that the whole way, then take your ruler and line it up and very carefully draw corner to corner, diagonal lines. And boy, I want you to notice that I have not even cut one single piece here yet. But you draw so that the line goes perfectly corner to corner. And then once you have them drawn, then you go back and just cut them off right in the diagon right on the squares. No diagonal cuts. Oh my goodness. No diagonal cuts. It's all square cuts. And you're going to make a big stack of two inch squares. Now, you're not into doing all of that two inch grid marking. I can understand that. Let me show you an easier way. You're going to love this. Just take your piece of fabric, put it on the uh, pressing mat, wrong side up, and this has a, a transfer ink on it already. Heat transfer ink. So just put it right sides down on there, line up the outside edges, have a very hot iron, no steam, a hot iron, and leave it in place for approximately 30 seconds. Now I want to see what it looks like. Oh, that is great. Oh my gosh. This is so much easier than marking it with a pencil. I love it. Those lines look like they're perfectly straight, too. Better than I could probably draw it. Now, I have a whole stack of two inch squares ready for sewing. My lattice is lined up in this order. You put your two inch squares wrong side up right beside your sewing machine. And the most critical part right here is sewing on that line. You just line up the outside edges right along here and drop your presser foot so that the needle is right on the line. And what I did was uh, change my presser foot to an open toe foot. This is actually my applique foot because I can see it so much better. I can see all of my stitching right through there. Okay, line this piece up, butt this right behind, match up those outside edges, and just sew on that line. Well, you assembly line sew one square right after the other. And also, too, I want you to notice that um, this square is overlapping that seam. Some people think, oh my gosh, I made a mistake. I overlapped the seam. Well, you're going to keep on going down all of your AAs and all of your BBs <laughs> for your barn raising design or whatever design you're making. And as soon as you go down one side of it, then just go ahead, cut your threads, but don't trim in between. Just turn it around and very carefully, oh, I can go ahead and just line that up on the opposite corner. And it's the same direction, exactly the same way. Line that up, sew on that line, assembly line, sew one after the other. They kind of lay on top of each other. This really shouldn't take you too long. Let me keep this flat so you can see it. There we go. Now, once you go, down assembly line sewing both sides. Then just go ahead, cut these apart. Let me get some space here. The best ruler right now for trimming these up is a six by 12. And you can cut more than one corner whenever you're working with a six by 12. Leave them all chained up together like this and line up your six by 12 ruler so that the quarter of an inch line is right on that stitching line. I see it going right along there and then just trim off those tips. And while it's still connected, about four chained together is very manageable. Between four and six, cut off again. Once you cut off those tips, then just go back with your rotary cutter and cut those threads. Whoa, 
That's looking good. I'm halfway done with this already. Now just drop it on the iron. Make sure you get your transfer paper out of the way. And first, set those seams just by dropping on them right there. And then just lift that up and over. Oh, a little steam would be just great. Turn it around this way. Push it out that side. One more. And open this up. Gosh, that would be half of it already. Now, you take the last two sides and do exactly that same technique. Line it up so that now you have your piece turned like this. Take this two inch square, put it right on top, and just sew corner to corner. We'll take a look and see what that looks like. Corner to corner, so again, it's overlapping that seam in the center. You go right down that seam. I don't know if I should take a look and show you first or if I should just wait. How about first I'm going to just trim off that little piece and press it flat. Go ahead and set the seam. This is the end of it, gosh. Set the seam and open it over. Oh my gosh, is that good? I can't believe it. What a great match. Now, see how well that looks right there? The two seams come right in here. Right here, it intersects at that point. Perfect. Now, once you've got that all done, you might want to go ahead and take your six by six. I know I have that on here someplace. Lost it. But just take your uh, six by six ruler, lay it across on the sides, and just square off sides across here. Make sure that you keep that quarter of an inch seam right along there. That looks pretty good, pretty straight. You do that on this end as well. My gosh, it's going so well. Well, I'm going to finish adding my points to my stars. I thought I was the first one to think of sewing on the diagonal line of a square for points, but this quilt maker did it years ago. This is the pattern called flying geese in the cabin, or perhaps it may even be pineapple. It's a little hard to identify, but she did something very unique with this quilt. She took a log cabin block, and as she was going around it, you can see right here, she took a square, sewed on the diagonal, and folded it out. And what's unique is that she didn't even trim that fabric away underneath. My gosh, this fabric is just fading away with time. But it is a great old quilt. Now, the original log cabin blocks were sewn on a piece of muslin, something like this. They would take and draw an X on the muslin, and then the center was placed right in the middle, center square. And the first light was placed right sides to it and stitched, no doubt, stitched by hand. Then this is folded back. The next piece goes right sides to it, stitched and folded out all the time, keeping an eye on that X right there. Well, I found a wonderful stack of log cabin blocks. Love to fool with them. Wool right here in the center, beautiful light and dark. I hate to sew them together because the backs are just as interesting as the fronts. Well, if you do decide to sew them together, you might want to do something like this. This is four log cabin blocks sewn together. Then it's embellished with some crocheting, an antique needle, and some thread. Oh, it's great. Now, if you do this, be sure and use acid-free paper between the quilt block and the cardboard. Then you won't get mildew on your quilt block. Preserve it forever. Now, if you find two blocks, you might want to do something like this. This is just two blocks sewn together, and then this is some machine stitching in the shape of a barn. Oh, it's so much fun to play with log cabin blocks. The stars are finally coming out, and oh, the pattern looks great. Now, I already have all of my lattice with the star points sewn on, and all of those center squares for the stars. Perfect order, boy, check, make sure, because now's the time to correct it. If you have an extra stack of star centers, don't worry about it, because those are used around the outside edge. We're going to add one more color right here. We're going to add an A4, and then we'll be putting the frame the whole way and including those star centers, so it's going to work great. Now, I want to sew this whole top together. 
the easiest way to do it is vertical rows from top to bottom. So I do a method of stacking an assembly line sewing. Take the second row and flip it right sides together to the first row and stack it the whole way down like that. And then just pick them up and stack them, bring them up to the top so that you have the top block on the top. Now for the third row, you'll just do it singly, stack it so the top block is on the top and go across each row stacking until you have a whole row across the top. Well, I'm going to stack my blocks, then I'll set up my sewing machine and show you how to sew the top together. The tricky part is getting the stacks to the table without mixing them up or dropping them, and I think I did it. Well, here's the first two rows already stacked right sides together, and then as it goes down, I put a pin through them up at the top and labeled them by number. So if I don't get all of my sewing completed right now, when I come back to it, it's still going to be in perfect order. So take rows one and two. Oh, I hope they're in order. Just pick up the first two right sides together and you can do this with your serger or with your regular sewing machine, whatever you'd like to do. But just hold on to the end and back stitch right now. And then after you anchor it, Go ahead, oh, a little bit of a seam you need to pick up. Go to the opposite end, match it up, finger pin it, stretch it together. Hold on tight. They should be a good size. We did make them one eighth inch larger than the block, but you know, they shrink up when you sew all of those little points on. Then just grab up the next two. It's different sizes. It's always the size of the block and the lattice, and then the lattice and the center square for the star, and just butt it right on behind. Now you just keep on going right down this stack, butting them on one after the other. You don't clip the threads in between, because it's just like putting pins in between, and that really helps save some time later. Match the opposite end and pull it. And then once you go down the first two rows, you pull it back up to the top. Let me go ahead and finish this. And I do like to back stitch at the, at the beginning and at the end, but not in between. Okay, then when you get the first two rows done, you just set those aside, open this up. Oh, that looks good. Nothing to match right there. Isn't that great? Then just pull row three down. Let's pull out that pin. Take off that number. And I like to keep them either over to the right of my sewing machine or on my lap, however they fit the best. Just pull the top lock over and look at it. Make sure it's in the right position. And this looks right because I have all the A colors going right through there. That's the top of the um, barn raising. Flip it right sides together and then just assembly line. So again, back stitch right here, anchor it and pull it. Now, it's quite easy to go back across the other way because when you go back across, all you do is alternate your seams, always pushing them away from the points, and that makes it easy. Let me just put on one more right here. Oh, and you can see what I'm going to do right now because there's a cross right here. Here's the seam that came down. There's the star point right there. This is where you want to cross, right on that stitching line. Let me line that up on the opposite side and then just go ahead and stitch. Oh, great right through that point. That looks pretty good. It's right through that point there. Let's see what it looks like on the opposite side. See if it's perfect. Yep. See? Just a perfect crisp point right there. Now, let me show you just with these pieces that I have here. When you go back across the opposite way, you flip them right sides together, always pushing the seams away from the points, away from this point here on both sides, now look underneath, away from the points, and that naturally gives you opposite directions. You can wiggle that in place and just match that right up. Well, let me just go ahead, sew my top together, and then we'll go on with the quilt. In my first Star Log Cabin class, I taught Mary Alice Baldwin how to make this quilt, and she did a beautiful job, didn't she? Well, I showed her how to stop the points right here and add a border. Well, the very next class, all of my students wanted to continue that star into their borders. So this is how you do it. Oh, it's very easy. 
right here you have A, the A side, you need to add A4, and you also need to add B4. Now to continue this and make it like a lattice, I just added a piece I call the frame. You sew those long strips together, cut them into block size pieces plus one eighth of an inch, and that's how that looks, and then those points go right on to the ends. Right here you need to have a star center and a star center right here. Oh, it's growing. Now, to finish this whole look, this is the first border. The first border is just cut block size because we need some points right there. Well, these points are cut in squares the same size as the star centers, exactly the same size. So if you have the star points here, just that first border, oh, let's build this right along there. You'll see how that comes. Now you need a star center here, points, points, and then this very piece is just a plain solid square. And I already added it onto the three other sides. Well, let me just stack up this row and I'll show you how to sew these pieces. Sewing the star points on the frame is exactly like I showed you, adding the star points to the lattice. Now here is A4 and frame. Those points are on. Exactly the same. This is B4, frame, the points are on. Now when you add the points to those border squares, to those first border squares, well you're just working with a square piece of fabric, so it's a little different. Just take it. Put your two inch stack of points right beside your, your um, square. Line that up. Oh, let's just see if I can see that line and sew on it. That's the tricky part. But you assembly line sew one square the whole way down. And then after you assembly line sew one square, then you just go ahead, go back, and trim that off. Boy, I think I'll just grab the six by six ruler here. Trim that off. And let's just take this, get that seam set, and press it open. Drop it on your, on your pressing mat. Press that seam, open that over. The best part is that you only need to have two points on here. So we're halfway done already. Now, this is what I did already. I did all my assembly line sewing with that second point the whole way down there. I wanted to have a long string just so you can see how easy it is to trim off all those points. You line up your quarter of an inch on your six by 12 and just zip that right along there and get that all trimmed up. Now when you press that over and open, that's what that piece looks like. You see that quarter of an inch seam right there, crisp, sharp point, and it's all ready for sewing. Now I already stacked up those rows want to show you how to sew them together. Just pick up the first two, just like sewing the whole quilt top together. You've got them in one stack right at your sewing machine. Pick up the first pair, use a quarter of an inch seam allowance, back stitch right here, match that up, and then you just keep on butting them right behind one after the other. You do the long vertical rows because when you go back across, they're really set short rows. So I'm just going to go ahead, cut this apart, and show you just how short it is. Gosh, open it up like that and like this. Now, so you don't have all of these short rows to be going back across, you take the second side as well. And then you can butt that one right behind it. Then you're not doing such short rows, wasting a lot of time. Remember, the seam goes away from the points here, away from the points here. Match that up, line that up, and just sew that across. Then you'll have all those stars and the border as well. Boy, this is a perfect time for this stiletto. Well, I'm just going to go ahead, add these, and finish my quilt top. What a magnificent finish to a beautiful quilt. Now this was machine quilted with a walking foot, stair step machine quilting. But if you're good with free motion machine quilting, you might want to go ahead and just disengage your feed dogs and just outline the design of the pattern. It goes much easier. 
Oh, it's wonderful. No diamonds in this quilt, just strips and squares. So enjoy making your star-studded beauty.